In 2004, when you stepped off that plane, did you ever in your wildest dreams think you'd become one of the most potent props in English, if not world rugby? So I didn't think I'd be here for long when I got off the plane. It was about 2.30 in the afternoon when I got here, and it was around November, and it was really dark. For 2.30 in the afternoon, I sort of wondered to myself, what have I got myself into? Now, you haven't always been the fine specimen of a rugby player that we see before us, yeah. because is it true to say that when you arrived here, the coaches had some concerns about your relationship with food. <laughs> is this true? Yeah, I'm not going to say no to that. Jim, Jim and Westy have sort of taken that under control. We've got Nick Johnson, who's our head trainer there. He's, uh, they've had, I've had a lot of help along the way, put it that way. I guess Pacific Islander forwards are known for enjoying the wide open spaces, but yeah. one that can scrummage like you scrummage it is quite a rarity, isn't it? Did that take a little bit of time? Um, yeah, no, definitely it does. If you've got Dorian West as a coach, he's in your ear every day um, and you can't get away from him. Dorian has actually sort of installed the, the basics of uh, my primary job as a prop, getting into your scrums and line at work before you get out and, and enjoy yourself in the loose. <laughs> There's no better feeling than actually knowing that you've dominated your opposition. Uh, prop and not only as a, on your own or as a front row but as a whole pack it sort of lifts the team up. Well we've got a busy time at the moment and um, they say the 12 months of a rugby player's testimonial year is the most stressful time of their career and you're right in the middle of it. How's it all going? It's not so bad. Um, yeah I, I, I totally agree with you that it's really stressful um, but luckily I, I've, I was away for, for the first few months so that that's made it more stressful but well not for the committee anyway but I, I, I was away with the World Cup and, and when I got back we sort of got on with it and um, we've got uh, luckily we've got, I've got a, a few people in the committee who, who have who are experienced in the, the previous uh, testimonials and and the guys that are new to it are, have got they're bringing in a lot of enthusiasm and and new ideas to, to what they what they can do and, and help help with sort of uh, with the events and stuff. So um, so far it's going pretty good. We haven't we've had a couple of events. Uh, we've got three or four major events coming up. And there's a big game as well that the Northampton fans have got to look forward to as part of your testimonial. Tell us about that. Uh, yes, that big game is on the Sunday, the 27th of May, which is the day after the Premiership final. So, <laughs> so, so hopefully it'll be a, a double header of celebrating the trophy and and uh, and, and the Pacific Islanders versus Saints 15. And I was speaking to some of your committee members, and they were saying what a great guy you were, that it's all about the charities for you. Um, which are the charities that you're supposed to support in? Um, there's a few. I, I started off with two and then now I think I've got about four or five charities that we're going to donate to. Um, but one of the charities is Kizilbury Primary School, um, which we've already donated £4,000 to, uh, to keep the lollipop lady, or well, she likes to be called the crossing lady now. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that... that, that um, the, the, the road that, that that leads to the school is, is pretty dangerous, and, and just the thought of not having a crossing lady there wasn't um, uh, just ridiculous. One of your charities is um, is the primary school which you went to in Tonga that you've been back to visit recently. I realised when I went back to the World Cup um, how much underdeveloped it is, and and uh, it's just it, that some of the the buildings itself is just. If it was here, you'd, they'd close it down just for health and safety reasons. I don't actually remember when I was there whether it was that bad or not, or whether it's just because things on, on this side of the world is a bit different. But we're looking to give them money and, and whatever goods we can get from here and sort of help the kids back in Tonga and, and sort of give them a better living. We've also got um, Millie, Millie. Uh, who's a local Northampton girl who's, who's, who was born with a, who's got a bad tumour and, and I think um, she's only eight. Uh, yeah, exactly, so we, and being, being a father of four, just, just the thought of one of your kids um, being born with, with that or, or having a tumour is, is something that you wouldn't even think of. Um, so we're, we're gonna be donating her some money um, and then the Cancer Society and then we're keeping it local with the Cynthia Hospice as well. So, like I said, there was, there was only two at the start, yeah, at the start of the testimonial, and it's just grown into about five or six now. So, we're just looking to help out in any way we can. So, uh, we're basically grateful that obviously the Northampton fans have uh, started this testimonial, and, and in a way, we're just saying thank you and, and putting it back into the local community and, and, uh, and sort of just giving it back, really.